Welcome to my shoebox final instructional video on how to make a cave with a growing stalactite on the inside. This is a perfect lesson for grades 4th, 5th, 6th. You might be able to try this with 3rd graders. Use your best discretion. And it would go along perfectly with a cave unit or some sort of cave lesson. Um, usually when you're studying caves, you learn about the stalactites and stalagmites that hang down from the inside. Um, so this would go great with that. Uh, be prepared to set aside some extra time to do this project. It does take a little bit longer to do, but it is a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed putting this together. And I hope that by watching it, you have found um, another tool that perhaps you could use someday in your own classroom. So, enjoy! We are going to be making the stalactites that are going inside of our cave. So to do that, you need a saucepan, you need two cups, yarn, cotton or wool is fine, this is cotton yarn, food coloring, Epsom salts, and water obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the saucepan on the stove and we're not going to bring water to a boil but we are going to make it pretty hot. Um, and we are going to put Epsom salt in it into the water on the stove until it does not dissolve anymore. Afterward, we're going to put the water into our two cups. And from there, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to experiment. Um, I'm going to add some food coloring to the water. Salt water, Epsom salt water. And then we're going to take um, our string and we're going to hang it between the two glasses that are going to be full of Epsom salt water. It's going to hang down in a little dip. And with that, hopefully we get a stalactite growing from our string. So um, I'm going to get started on making our stalactite solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour Epsom salt into the water and stir it until it dissolves completely. I don't actually know how much, but I think it depends on how much water you have. It's kind of a hit and miss. Do not bring the water to a boil. If you are using some sort of stove top, um, don't bring your water to a boil. This may take a little while, but we're going to stir until the salt's dissolved. An option, if you don't have a stove in your school or maybe a sink in your classroom, is you can bring an electric kettle. Um, I've got one here. So this, you just fill it up with water, push the button, and it'll bring the water to a boil. Let it cool down because you don't want to use boiling water, obviously that's hot. You can see that it's, there are still salt crystals in there, but it is dissolving slowly. I'm going to add some more. And just keep on doing this until we have a nice saturated solution. Took quite a bit of Epsom salt. Um, this bag was maybe up to here when I started. It's now down to here. It took a while. Um, I made myself a latte while I was waiting. It's delicious. So now we're ready to put our water into our glasses. I'm going to use a ladle to put my water into my cups. Because there is salt sitting in the bottom of this, I don't want the salt going in here. Let's fill them up to about, they're almost to the top, not quite. Both my cups filled with our stalactite water, salt water. I'm going to make pink stalactites. So it's just food coloring for pink, water, red, reddish pink. If you've covered why stalactites change colors or specific colors. Um, if they're white, that means that they're pure calcite. Um, if they're other colors like oranges or browns or blacks, um, they've picked up minerals, other minerals in the soil and the limestone as the water was traveling through the ground to get to the cave. So you can pick different colors um, and discuss why it was that color. What did that little acidic water droplet travel through? So I'm going to set my two solutions here and I have, it's just the top of um, a cottage cheese container um, just to sit in the middle of them as like a little tray to catch anything that falls because water will drip onto this. So then I have my string, my cotton or wool string and I put two safety pins on the bottom of it so it will sink to the bottom of my solutions. 
You can use anything to weigh it down, um, be it a bead that wouldn't float, um, safety pins, uh, paper clips, anything like that. So you're going to put both ends into your solution, drop it down, and what you want to have is a dip in your string. Water will drip off of this and a stalactite should grow downward. So that is that step of making your stalactites and their solution. Here I've got my stalactites forming. You can see a water drip forming right in the middle of the U-shape bend and it's dripping down and eventually that is where my um, stalactite will grow. Now it is time to make our cave. I have here, this is a free box from the post office. It's one of their priority mailboxes. You can get these for free at the post office. Just go in and ask. This is a medium flat rate box. Um, otherwise you can use a shoe box. So this is what I'm going to turn into the interior of my cave. Um, I just have a bunch of other random arts and crafts things. I have some paints, I have some glitter foam pieces, I have hot glue, paintbrush, um, markers. I'm just going to turn this into a cave. What will eventually happen is my growing stalactites are going to go on the inside of this. Um, so then in essence we've got a cave. Um, so. I'm going to get started working on this and I will show you how it turns out as I go along. I have so far decorated the inside of my cave and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two flaps here like so and I'm going to hide the solution of my stalactites, the stuff in the little containers. I'm going to hide it behind and then the string will hang, hang across and it'll look cave-esque. I have, it is a foam, like a foam clay. It doesn't weigh anything, it's super light. And you can mold it into whatever you want really easily, but I was going to make um, stalactites and everything hanging down from the ceiling and gluing them up. And the thing with your kids, they can do whatever they want to their boxes. There's no, this is what your cave has to look like, because obviously, you know, all caves look different. The purpose is just to have that we will have stalactites and stalagmites. I'm going to keep going on this and then I will show you um, more progress as I have more, more, more to show. It's looking more cavernesque. So we have our trees. I will paint them or color, probably color them with markers. But you can see, here's a cross section of our earth that we have. This is the soil. And then the yellow is the limestone. And then eventually, ah, ta da! Here is the final product that I have created. So up on top here we have our organic material that when it dies and decays um, creates CO2 in the soil and when our rain falls from the sky the CO2 goes down through the soil and our little rain droplet picks up that CO2 creating um, a carbonic acid and then the CO2 eventually hits limestone and as it goes through the limestone it dissolves calcite and as it dissolves that calcite, eventually it hits a cave and the CO2 goes away and you're left with calcite and water. And the water drips from the ceiling and eventually the water goes away and you're left with these calcite formations called stalactites and stalagmites. Now way here in the back, right here, you can see my actual growing stalactite. My two cups are hidden behind these panels. And draped across here, I have an actual stalactite that will continue to form until my uh, salt water solution is gone. Um, you want to put some sort of tray or something here, since this is cardboard, um, to catch the water that does drip. This is the final result of our cave project. Kids can make a model of a cave and understand how stalactites and stalagmites are formed.